Well, the situation at least gives us some interesting business topics to discuss, specifically what businesses will do well and how do you capitalize on a disaster if you're inclined to do so, or how do you protect yourself? Um, I guess the first real question is what makes a business? It's going to be the overall theme of this podcast is what makes a business. What actually makes a business exist? I think of a business, is that enough to make it real? I think of a thing that I would like to do. Well, you know, if you've watched our previous videos on YouTube, you'll know that really uh, we define a business as either a product or service that you're selling. Uh, there is one interesting project that has arisen from this coronavirus epidemic. Uh, there is a high school student in Washington State, and uh, his name is... Um, for you. Avi uh, Schiffman, I believe is his name. Ah, uh, yeah. His name is Avi Schiffman. He's from Washington State. He's 17. He developed a, uh, a website that coordinates information about coronavirus from the World Sources, World Health Organization, Centers for Disease Control, uh, local health agencies. He coordinates all of that information along with having a, a sort of a uh, a, a set of articles about how to handle coronavirus, what we already know. Uh, so it's, you know, key concepts and steps you can take, and then, you know, uh, current information. And so pretty much it's a informational website. Pretty much they source their product, which is information from known sources. It just sort of coordinates that information together, and it keeps people uh, in the loop about what's actually happening, you know, from the news and from the... Uh, public centers. Uh, now, it's easy to think, wow, this kid has it made. He has this great enterprise set up and now he'll be able to develop his future out of having taken advantage of this experience or this uh, series of events that we're all participating in. Now, the question I have is, does he really have a future from it? What is he doing to actually, let's say it, he's got to make money. He's got to make money from this if he wants to be a business. It's not a business unless he's making money. And, you know, you could say, well, it's kind of a little bit crass to make money out of a world health scare, but so what? You know, at least the point of this podcast, at least in this community, we're not going to uh, criticize somebody for uh, providing the public with something that they need and with taking a little bit of profit to grow his enterprise. So it's okay. He should make money from it. And... The first idea that I had about how he can take these millions of viewers who are coming to his website to get information about what he's doing, the first idea I had was that he could be sponsored by a pharmaceuticals company. Maybe there's a pharmaceuticals company who really feels like they're on the cutting edge or they have an idea of how to fix it or they uh, have some preventative treatments that they want to endorse. Maybe it's a hand sanitizer company who just wants to promote their hand sanitizer to all of these people who obviously need it and will obviously use it. So why shouldn't he get $250,000 to promote Purell on his website with millions of viewers a day for the rest of the year? It's a good deal for both sides. Suddenly Purell becomes a more uh, uh, a name brand more closely associated with this epidemic. Good for the Purell company. Good for Avi Schiffman making a certain amount of money. And it's good for the customer because, well, now they're aware of what's happening with coronavirus and they're aware of uh, a great product that uh, purports itself to be able to address this problem as well. So what makes a business? Well, the business is the relationship with the customers and the business is the uh the value that's being offered to them to draw them, draw their focus to one place. And then finally, the business is the monetization of that attention. So more or less, he has the opportunity to sell access to his customer base. That is what his product is. It's access to an attentive customer base with a community-oriented interest. In other words, their interest revolves around one thing that the community is about. For instance, if you had a, a shoe uh, community, everyone who follows that shoe community is a specific customer or a specific type of customer 
potential customer. They have a specific interest. And so everybody who follows it is is a uh, distilled population. It's a uh, honed uh, interest group. And but this is what we have here. Um, anyways, the name of his website is ncov2019.live. We will have a link to his website specifically in the bio of this uh, video. Um, so it's just one example of a, of a way to capitalize on the situation. It's a business opportunity that didn't exist two months ago. Um, you know, and some businesses are actually having it more difficult. Uh, some of it is more obvious. You know, the factory that produces your raw materials closes down. So now you don't have any raw materials to produce into a finished product. So your factory closes down. And so factories stacked on factories with disrupted supply lines leaves a bunch of guys standing around with nothing to make, nothing to work on, nothing to finish. Um, now, there is another instance, and uh, this company called uh, Robinhood, and what they are is an online stock trading platform where you upload your money to them, and then you can buy and sell stocks through their platform. Well, coronavirus has had a profound impact on the stock market in the last week. Uh, the stock market dropped more than a thousand points in one day. I think that might be the biggest drop ever, or one of the, you know, leading handful of single day downward movements in the history of the stock market. Then, one or two days later, it bounced right back up with the highest single day rise in stock market history. Because we're actually in an economy that is extremely robust, and nobody quite knows how to handle this these problems that we're having. Nobody quite knows how to say uh, this is what's going to happen or this is what to expect or this is how to hedge our bets. And so people are buying, people are selling, people want to get in. There's money that would love to get any advantage they can in the stock market, except there is a chance that the stock market is about to be totally ruined. It's just a weird situation. Um, but Robin Hood had a big problem because they... Uh, had a power outage during the time period when the stock market was rebounding. They had excessive people signing up, they had excessive people trying to trade, and they just did not have the resources to cover the, the problem. Um, and so they just shut down. Nobody could buy or sell anything during one of the biggest stock mar market single day rallies in history. Uh, Robin Hood is subject to a lawsuit actually right now. And Robinhood is interesting because it's a privately traded company. It's not publicly traded. And you ask yourself, if they had become publicly traded sooner, maybe they would have had the resources to have a better backup system. Maybe they could have stepped up their hosting. Maybe they could have uh, done a lot of things uh, in order to uh, prevent this from happening. They're probably going to have to settle uh, quite a bit of money that could have gone towards fortifying their infrastructure sooner. Um, privately traded companies that are very large, billion dollar tri privately traded companies, which are called unicorns. And the reason they're called unicorns is because somehow, through funding, I mean they're still funded, but just not with that final stock market funding, which brings in a lot of money, but changes the very nature of your organization forever. You know, they managed to grow to full size without having to take that final leap towards maturity. Uh, joining the stock market is a big step towards uh, becoming a mature company. And uh, the article that I found most interesting was actually $25 billion companies you haven't heard of. So they, uh, they compared the uh, exposure or the name recognition of this company by having sur surveyed 4,000 people. They surveyed 4,000 people and they saw that, for instance, Reddit had the highest name recognition of any privately held company, then Airbnb, then SpaceX, you know, with 85%, 80%, 78% of people who were asked about it knew what that company was and could tell you something about what they did. Now, other companies like... Uh, cable internet service providers and cable providers like Starry, for instance, was at the bottom of the list. And I'm going to include a link to this article in the bio as well, but Starry was at the bottom of the list. 
with only 1% name recognition. They're a billion dollar privately held company and almost nobody knows what they do. Well, what they actually do is provide uh, cable television service to the Boston, greater Boston area. And so it's like, how could they have become a billion dollar unicorn without having developed a name recognition brand? Well, this is an instance where they probably assumed, consumed smaller companies. They had a venture, uh, uh, a hedge fund behind them or a large investor, and they were able to consume a bunch of smaller cable companies and become this billion dollar company by eating up all the smaller fish. And they provide a service where it's really difficult to compete with them because how many cable service providers can fit into one region and still function? Well, the answer is one, maybe two. It's almost like a utility. So uh, Robinhood comes in at 29% recognition. So 20, I mean 39%. So 39% of the people who hear about this story, it's going to be indelibly marked because the brand has already been uh, introduced to the mind, has already been categorized in the mind, and now this devastating news of incompetence in a year when Robinhood was planning on making an IPO. They were planning on going from being a privately held company to a publicly held company this year. So it's really a devastating time for them. Corona has really knocked them back on their heels. Will they have an IPO? I don't even know. I would suspect... Yes. I would say this problem is not so big unless there is some sort of class action lawsuit that comes out of this. Uh, there's already been a lawsuit. It's an attempt to be class action. They haven't pulled in enough people yet, but the a lawsuit has been filed. Uh, and it really just says Robin Hood was negligent. We as investors deserved the right to have access to our funds in the investment climate. I think it'll be an expensive lawsuit. I do not think it would be successful. And the reason is, is because in their uh, user agreement, it says sometimes things beyond our control happen and we can do nothing about it. And that's in the user agreement. Now, the lawyers uh, on, on the side of the slighted customers say that, well, some of the statements that Robin Hood has made indicates that somehow maybe they did have some control and they overlooked their obligation. So we'll see what happens there. But they were a publicly traded company already. Uh, they might have been afforded additional legal protections or uh, have access to a larger uh, insurance policy or have even government protections that they might not otherwise have as a privately held company. So this is just about the worst possible time for them to be uh, in this situation. So coronavirus strikes again.